Oh, you have got to be shitting me. I have just recorded an entire video with not hitting the record button. Yeah, okay. Let's go with it now. Hi. My name is Misty, and welcome back to Speculative Magpie, where we are going to do a book review. Again, this time with the button on, because why the fuck not? So, <laughs> okay, so this is the book that we are reviewing, Meddling Kids, by Edgar Cantaro. And I read this book for Jason Weird Reads and Books of Blood's Halloween Creature Feature Reading Extravaganza. And this was the book to, um, for the prompt. Read a book about the Cthulhu mythos written by a person of color. And... So I chose Meddling Kids by Richard, by, by Edgar Cantaro. And this is his second book written in English. Um, the first book is The Supernatural Enhancements. And I'm going to admit it, y'all. I picked this up because of the cover. I mean, look at that. That's an awesome cover. I love this cover. It's just so cool. Everything about this book is awesome. So, you know how this works. <laughs> For the second time, I'm going to read you the synopsis, and then we're going to come back and talk about the book, okay? All right, so here we go. The Summer of 1977. The Blyton Summer Detective Club of Blyton Hills, a small mining town in Oregon's Oregon's Zonix River Valley solved their final mystery and unmasked, and unmasked the elusive Sleepy Lake Monster. Another low-life fortune hunter trying to get his dirty hands on the legendary riches hidden in De Bowen Mansion. And he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling kids. 1990. The former detectives have grown up and apart each haunted by disturbing memories of their final night in the old haunted house. There are too many strange half-remembered en encounters and events that cannot be dismissed or explained away by a guy in a mask. And Andy, the once intrepid tomboy, now wanted in two states, is tired of running from her demons. She needs answers. To find them, she will need Carrie, the one-time kid genius and budding biologist, the now drinking her ghost away in New York with Tim, the excitable Weimaraner descended from the original canine member of the club. They will also have to get Nate, the horror nerd currently residing in an asylum in Ar Arkham, Massachusetts. Luckily, Nate has not lost contact with Peter, the handsome jock turned movie star who was once their team leader, which is remarkable considering Peter has been dead for years. The time has come to get the team back together to face their fears and find out what actually happened all those years ago at Sleepy Lake. It's their only chance to end the nightmares and perhaps save the world. And that's the synopsis for Meddling Kids. Now, I'm going to pose a question, and you have to keep in mind, I haven't been on YouTube that long, so it might have happened, but why aren't more people talking about this book? This book was so much fun. I enjoyed it from cover to cover. The characters were awesome. The plot was awesome. It, it was... It's everything that it markets itself to be. It's a Scooby-Doo Cthulhu mythos. And it just has all the tropes in there. It has the kids. It has the dog. It has, um, you know, 
the sheriff that doesn't quite believe him, but he kind of does. He knows a little bit more than he's letting on. Um, there's the um, there's the old man that helps them out when he can, who also has ties to the military. Um, there's um, several different red herrings and places for you to go and that's just the scooby-doo tropes then you hit the cthulhu tropes you have underground caverns and miners digging too deep and un and unleashing horrors and um ancient native american <laughs> legends that are actually true and um gods put on this earth to fight the monster that's you know supposed to rise again and it's just awesome this is so good and the characters were amazing yeah the characters were fun you laughed a lot more but every character in here was so vulnerable and just wonderful andy she's the one that finally was like, hey, we have to go back. We have to finish this. We all know that it wasn't just a guy in a mask. Stuff actually happened that night. We might not remember it all, but we have to go back and finish. And she's amazing. She's tough. She's resilient. But she left town because those memories were, were getting to her. And also she was in love with Carrie and carries this you know she had big dreams and she had goals but then what she saw that night kind of you know broke her a little bit and then you know andy shows up and it's like you know we have to go back and she doesn't want to go but she doesn't want andy to go alone and then they have to go break nate out which is actually carrie's cousin and they have to go break him out of the asylum which was amazing y'all breaking Nate out of the asylum probably has to be one of my favorite parts of this book it was epic it was phenomenal and it was just so cartoony but completely plausible in my mind at least while I was reading the book that I was like cheering the whole time it was fantastic um, and then when they get to the town and the bully that used to pick at them is like, you know, hi, hi guys, you're back. And they're like, what's your deal? <laughs> you know? But you know, without Peter, they need that, that, that good person, not good person, that strong jock type there. And so they have to get over that to have this person help them. And, and they have, and they come face to face with the cop that they didn't feel, you know, would believe them. And, and the old man that used to help them is a lot older and a lot more of an alcoholic than he used to be. But, and then, you know, just the, just the relationship between and Andy and Carrie was just amazing. It's this whole queer platonic relationship that's just... It's just lovely. It was fantastic. And then you had Nate who's who kind of is respons feels responsible for the whole thing. And he kind of is a necromancer. <laughs> it's just fantastic. It really is this everybody who likes Scooby Doo, who fuck likes supernatural, who likes H.P. Lovecraft should read this book. This book is amazing. This book is wonderful. And I am so glad I picked this book up. And there's so many points I made in the video that doesn't exist that I'm not making right now. But I can't go back and watch them because, you know. Oh, I remember. Um, one of the points I wanted to talk about is, like, Carrie's hair is like a whole nother character in here, but that's not as weird as it sounds. Cause you're seeing a lot of Carrie through Andy's eyes. And <laughs> it's just so amazing the way that she has these, Carrie has red curly thick hair and 
it's almost in another character in this book. And and then the whole subterranean scenes in here are just so creepy and well thought out. And I just, everybody read this book. It's fantastic. It's so much fun. And that's it. That's all I can talk about right now. I can't, I have nothing. The plots that I'm, the points I made in the video that doesn't exist is, um, lost forever. So that's all I have to say. So come back and hopefully I won't ever do this again. Lose a video. <laughs> Bye guys. See you next time we talk about books and things. <laughs>